So we are going to prove that the square root of n is irrational for any integer n that is not a perfect square. We aren't just going to show that the square root of 2 is irrational or the square root of 3 is irrational. We're going to show that the square root of 12 is irrational and the square root of 44 is irrational. Anything that isn't a perfect square, we will show that its square root must be irrational. And we are going to do that by contradiction. To start out, we'll assume the opposite. So we will assume that the square root of n is rational. If that's true, we know that the square root of n can be written as p over q, where p and q are integers. We're also going to assume that this fraction is in reduced form. Now what that means is that this fraction is not going to be equal to something like 2 over 4. Because if we had 2 over 4, we could take a 2 out of the top and bottom and just write it as a half instead. Now let's think about what it means for a fraction to be in reduced form. If this fraction is in reduced form, that means we can write both the numerator and the denominator as a product of prime factors. By the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, any integer can be written as a product of primes. So if we look at p over q, we're going to look at some prime factors that I'm going to call a1, a2, a3, and so on, up to some value a sub m for p. And then for q, we're going to write b1, b2, b3, all the way up to b k. And these are the prime factors that make up the integers p and q. So for example, if p were equal to 6, then we would have 2 times 3 on the top here. If q were 7, then we would just have 7 because 7 is prime. Or if q were something like 35, then we would have 7 times 5, and those are the prime factors. What we have to remember here is if this fraction is in reduced form, none of the prime factors on the top can ever be equal to the prime factors on the bottom. So if we had a 2 on the top and a 2 on the bottom, we could cancel those out at the beginning, and the fraction would then be in reduced form. If it's in reduced form, there's nothing we can cancel out, which means all of these primes, the primes in the top, are always different from the primes in the bottom. And that's going to be a big deal in a second. Now what we're going to do is take this square root statement and square both sides. That means that n is equal to p squared over q squared. And this is pretty cool, but what we also have to think about is what are the properties of q? What would happen if q were equal to 1? Well, if q equals 1, then we would have n equals p squared, where p is an integer. But that would make n a perfect square. For example, if p were 3, then we would have n equals 3 squared, which is 9, and 9 is a perfect square. But we said n is not a perfect square, which means that q cannot be equal to 1. And as long as q is not equal to 1, we know n is not a perfect square, so the conditions are satisfied. Now that we go down here to our equation, n equals p squared over q squared, and q is not equal to 1. What that means is that n is a ratio of two integers. But remember, none of the prime factors in p are equal to any of the prime factors in q. We might have a bunch of 2s and 3s on the top and a bunch of 5s and 7s on the bottom, but none of them are going to cancel out. So if p over q is a fraction, and it's not an integer because q isn't 1, p squared over q squared is also not an integer, which means that n is equal to something that's not an integer. Therefore, n is not an integer. If the square root is rational, then n is not an integer. But we know that's ridiculous, because we said that an integer n is what's inside of this square root. So there's no way that n is an integer and then n is not an integer. If we plugged in something like n equals 12, we could use this process to prove that 12 is not an integer. But that doesn't make any sense at all. So what that means is we've reached a contradiction. And if we've reached a contradiction, one of our assumptions must have been wrong. And the only assumption that we made is that the square root of this integer is rational. Because it's rational, 
and Q is not equal to one since it's not a perfect square, we have these prime factors in the top and bottom that when we square, they don't cancel out. And then we get something that isn't an integer. Therefore, this assumption must have been false. And therefore, square root of n is not equal to p over q for some integers. Therefore, square root of n is not rational. Or in other words, it is irrational by contradiction. And in fact, that is the end of our proof. So this is a nice short way to prove that as long as your square root is not of a perfect square, it's going to be irrational. So this applies to any integer. So if we look at the square root of six or the square root of 80, anything that's not a perfect square, we can use this process to show by contradiction that the square root there must be irrational.